If you want to optimize your health, then breathing is definitely something you have to get right. How you breathe has a direct effect on your risk of heart disease and dementia, your sleep quality, and your mental health. In kids, breathing correctly is essential for the proper development of the jaw and facial bones, which is what determines how straight their teeth end up being. Breathing also impacts loads of other health outcomes in children, including how likely they are to end up with visual problems or even a diagnosis of ADHD. Let's consider three elements. How fast we are breathing, if we are using our chest or our belly to draw our breath in, and if we are breathing through our mouth or our nose. The stresses of the modern world mean that many people spend way too much of their life in fight or flight mode, that adrenaline and cortisol fueled stress state. In that state, people tend to be breathing fast and using their chest to draw the breath in and out through their mouth. If you spend too much time in fight or flight mode, you'll habitualize that pattern of breathing, which is bad because it's exactly the opposite of how we should be breathing for good health. Firstly, we need to be breathing slowly and consciously making our breath relaxed, steady, and calm. Not only does breathing reflect your state of mind, it also impacts what's going on up here. If you habitually breathe fast, you are encouraging more activation of the fight or flight response, which leads to higher blood pressure and higher cortisol levels, both of which increase your risk of cardiovascular disease. Slow down your breathing and you'll reassure your brain that all is well, and that will mean you can enter into a relaxed rest and digest state, which will improve your mental health as well as your digestion. A rough ballpark for a healthy, relaxed resting breathing rate in adults would be around six to eight breaths a minute. Secondly, we need to be breathing through our nose and not our mouth. Our nose is our body's natural air filter, filtering out many harmful bugs and pollutants, as well as humidifying and warming the air before it enters the lungs. Mouth breathing can negatively affect the balance of bacteria in the mouth and so worsen dental health and give you bad breath. Nasal breathing keeps your oral microbiome in better shape. Getting nitric oxide to your lungs is key for efficient oxygen absorption into your bloodstream. Nitric oxide acts to open up blood vessels and reduces blood pressure. Nitric oxide is produced in your nose and it's nasal breathing that gets it down to your lungs, making nasal breathing a key factor for good health. In children, nasal breathing allows the tongue to sit in the correct position against the roof of the mouth, which can't happen if they are mouth breathing. The pressure this exerts along with airflow through the nose is essential for the proper development of the jaw and facial bones, which is a prerequisite for straight teeth. If the maxilla, the bone at the center of the face, does not develop properly, it can impact all the surrounding bones too, including the bones of the eye socket. This can then impact the shape of the eyeball, leading to short-sightedness and astigmatism. Mouth breathing also increases susceptibility to airway infections. Parents need to be prompting their children to close their mouth so that they breathe through their nose if it's not happening naturally. Mouth breathing at night compounds all these problems in both adults and children and can lead to problems like snoring and sleep apnea, which will mean sleep is lighter and less restorative. So if you're snoring at night or wake up with a dry mouth in the morning, these are warning signs. And that's why it's becoming an increasingly popular wellness trend for people to actually tape their mouth shut at night. Thirdly, we need to be using our belly, not our chest, to draw breath in and out. When we use our belly, it bulges out as we take a breath in. Belly breathing means we are using the diaphragm at the base of our lungs to draw the breath in, rather than muscles of the upper chest. A moving diaphragm produces pressure changes in the abdomen, which contributes to blood circulation, and this can take some of the workload off the heart. Diaphragmatic breathing also gives better oxygen uptake into the blood, and once again is associated with dampening down the fight or flight response and promoting rest and digestion. Mode. So as often as you remember, throughout the day, prompt yourself to breathe slowly through your nose using your belly. The more you practice, the more it will become subconscious and happen automatically, including during the night. You'll find yourself naturally catching and correcting yourself when you deviate from that healthy pattern of breathing. It seems likely that how we breathe is going to have an impact on every part of our body and every disease process in many ways beyond that which I've discussed in this video. As an example, I've put the link to a study on the relationship between breathing and Alzheimer's disease in the description. Checking in with your breathing also provides a good prompt for many other things. Do you need to relax your shoulders or unclench your jaw? Is it time to get up, move around from that sitting position or take a break from your screen? The more you check in with your breathing, the better you'll feel both physically and mentally. And if you're wondering about the ADHD link, that deserves a video of its own and it's coming soon. So make sure you subscribe. Thanks for listening. I'll see you next time.